So, the AEK, the Russian Bullet Hose. Been in plenty of Battlefield titles now, so I thought we'd take a look and see how this thing has changed and adapted in different games, starting with Bad Company 2 and moving all the way through to Battlefield 4. And also, this Through the Ages thing, I want to make a series of it, so suggest some other weapons in the description, one that's been in the last few Battlefield games, and I'll do another weapon soon. But, back to the AEK, and as I said, let's start with Bad Company 2. The AEK was the first weapon available to players who chose the Assault Kit, no unlock required, and offered what all starter weapons should offer, an easy route into understanding the gun mechanics of the game. The weapon offered a high rate of fire, complementing its medium damage potential of 15.4 damage per bullet, and offered lower recoil than what you might expect, again for the reason of easing a player into the action. In fact, its stats are almost identical to the M16A2, apart from the M16 in this game being burst fire. Its fully automatic fire and high rounds per minute meant that the AEK was a great weapon to hip fire with, and anyone that's playing Bad Company 2 will know that hip fire in that game was a much more viable tactic than it's ever been in later games. The gun was best used in short, sharp bursts of bullets to control that recoil, and sometimes the iron sights would pull up over where you're shooting if you bursted for too long, meaning you'd likely lose sight of your target. In-game, it was never a hugely popular choice from what I can remember, but Bad Company 2 is nearly six years old now, so my memory of it is a little bit fuzzy. Weapons like the AN-94 beat it out really, mainly due to it not being as good, but also, I think because it was the starter weapon, people seem to move on fairly quickly. Moving on to Battlefield 3 now, and the gun here has a completely different story to tell. Alongside its rather obvious popularity in this game, it was modelled differently to the Bad Company 2 variant, being made to look like the full production model, whereas previously it looked like the prototype. It was part of a trio of weapons widely considered to be the best in the game, a god gun you could say. Along with the M16A3 and the M416, the AEK was part of a group of guns seen so often, you'd normally get hated on in the chat box for using it. The weapon was unlocked at 60,000 assault score and again appeared to cater towards that newer group of players. Modest recoil in comparison to a similar weapon, the FAMAS, the gun shot out 25 max damage bullets at a rate of 900 rounds a minute. The thing is a powerhouse. I'd probably say it was the third most popular gun in the game behind the other two, the M16 and the 416, but without a doubt, it was my favourite assault rifle in the game. To this day, the gun has been used for a total of 88 hours in-game by me. That's almost 20% of my full game time in BF3, which is currently sitting at 513 hours. I love this thing. Nosh RTDM32 players whip out my AEK Heavy Barrel 4 Grip Cobra Sight, and it kills just about anything that walks towards you. Recoil is easy to counter, and due to the high rate of fire, players just don't have time to react. I'd still say to this day the gun is borderline OP, but man, BF3 was definitely the highlight for the AEK. And now, Battlefield 4. The gun took a massive drop in popularity here, and I think that was likely due to the way the gun performed with the iffy netcode on release. Now, if you play on 60Hz servers with the AEK, it shines through, and it can be very effective. But at the time where it really mattered, which was at launch when everyone was playing, it wasn't anywhere near as compelling as the BF3 variant. The design took a step back in time as well, mimicking the colour scheme of the older Bad Company variant with a green handguard, but you can't see that anyway due to my ridiculously garish camo. To unlock the AEK in multiplayer, you need to amass 28,000 assault score points, which isn't particularly hard, and again, like previous titles, it favours that medium to close range combat due to its high rate of fire and bullet spread. 
Recoil again is very easy to counter, and the Cobra Sight is just a natural fit for me now. I felt at range though, the AK was much harder to hit targets than it was in Battlefield 3, which is likely due to some smaller tweaks in terms of recoil and spread, but the majority of the time you'd be hard pressed to find a weapon that could perform as well as it did at medium range. The reason I don't think it excelled as much as it did in BF3 was due to the sheer volume of weapons that you can unlock in Battlefield 4. There were so many other alternatives that outclassed it at nearly everything. For example, weapons like the Ace-23, which had a lower rate of fire, but better damage potential at medium to long range because of that lower rate of fire. The M416, which again had a lower rate of fire, but was easier to control at long range. And finally, the L85A2 that was included, I think, in the second Assault DLC. That weapon as well. Much easier to shoot people at longer range, and you could compete at medium and short range with it as well. In BF4, the AEK feels like it's stunted to only really work in that short to medium range zone. The AEK is a bit of a mixed bag through the ages, and I think that's a good thing. You wouldn't want one weapon to become so unanimously tied to the series that you'd have to include it in every single game. That'd be stupid, but without a doubt, it shone most brightly during the BF3 era. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think of the AEK in the comments. And while you're down there, drop me a like as well. But until next time, my name is Westy. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.